as you can see, it makes quite a mess and looks a little questionable. I promise. I was just throwing pots, but yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So one of the things I noticed and one of the questions that I get asked the most and that is a pretty frequent question um, that us potters get asked, especially by other potters, is what kind of clay do you use? And I haven't seen like a whole lot of videos of um, you know other potters on YouTube talking about what clays they use or why they use them. So I figured in this video I would go over one of the new clays I just got into the studio. Um, why, when, how, all that jazz as to why I use this particular clay and um, what times I use it and those kinds of reasons. So I figured we could get into it. The new clay that I got is um, from Georgie's. It's called Trail Mix Cinnamon. <clears throat> it's a cone six clay and I usually use it about once a year during the summer. Now the reason why I don't use it all the time and it's not my absolute go-to clay is because it has a lot of iron oxide in it. As you can see it's a very red clay and it is very hard to clean up. So I typically, because I don't have running water in my studio, tend to stick with it during the summer months when I can have access to a lot of water um, via you know my hose in the garden and stuff. So uh, that is kind of the reasons why I tend to only use this about once a year. The reasons I do use it are that it comes out really beautiful red brown when you fire it. Um, it likes a lot of my glazes I've tested it on. Um, it, I really like the difference in having a darker clay versus a lighter clay. Uh, sometimes it's nice to just switch it up. It's very similar to the B mix which is my go-to clay in that it is pretty easy to throw. Um, pretty soft, pretty malleable. Um, it's a little gritty. It does have, um, I'm not sure if it's a uh, sand or something in it, but it does have something that has a little bit more of a uh, rougher texture to it. So that's kind of some of the reasons why I tend to use it and why I use it when I use it. Um, like I said, if I could, it probably would be one of my go-to clays, um, but I just don't have the ability to clean, <laughs> uh, with lots of water all the time. Um, uh, a lot of times I'm using just water buckets in my studio, my uh, hot water electric teapot, you know, to get things warm enough in the winter. Um, I'm in an insulated studio, but I don't have any heat. Uh, so it is really hard to work with water in the colder months and to work with a lot of it, uh, which is why I tend to just stick with the red clay during the summer. But it also kind of makes it, you know, more of a, a special thing, you know. Um, I don't have a ton of pieces that are made out of it and uh, my customer base usually gets really really excited around this time of the year because they'll they know they expect to be able to see the red clay and that that I will be making pieces out of it um, typically during the summer months so it kind of makes it you know like um, limited edition um, so it works for that uh, that in that way too as far as from a selling standpoint um, yeah, so I am going to show you some videos of me throwing and kind of what it's like to work with the clay and yeah, we'll just kind of get into um, the properties of this clay a little bit and show you some of the work that I'm going to be doing with this clay. So as you can see, I got my red clay all cut up and um, rounded off into balls so I can start throwing on the wheel. I'm going to be going live in a little bit. Um, sorry if the camera's a little shaky, I had to, uh, use my hands instead of the tripod because I've got my, uh, live video set up on my tripod. Boop, there we go. Um, but yeah, so we got it all cut up, we got it ready to go, and then I'll start throwing with it.
So I thought I should show you the aftermath of fusing the red clay. As you can see, it makes quite a mess and looks a little questionable. I promise, I was just throwing pots, but yeah. <laughs> and then usually after using the red clay, I do end up cleaning this wheel. I, um, If I'm just solely using red clay, sometimes I'll just leave it um, for when I'm trimming later, but I actually have a bunch of other things, as you can see over here, that need to be trimmed. Um, and then I also have a bunch of stuff down here, over by the other wheel, like down here in this area that need to be trimmed too. So that means that I'm going to have to clean this up. Uh, so that I'm not mixing clays together and stuff like that. Especially because a lot of these are raku pieces. And I don't, you know, it's hard enough to get your pieces to turn out uh, without cracking and breaking. So we don't want to cause more issues for them by adding a different clay to them. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we're going to be cleaning this wheel. And as you can see over here is all of the sodium silicate red clay mugs that I threw. Um, and... We're just going to let those dry. I'm going to cover them up. I try to keep them pretty separate from the rest of my clay just because, you know, the clays I'm using have different shrink rates and stuff like that. So, you know, we don't want to uh, cause issues with shrinking and things like that by mixing the clays together. Um, so, we're going to leave these guys to dry over here away from all the rest of the pottery and we'll clean the wheel. The thing I noticed about working with this clay is it just needs so much water. It's like a giant sponge. <laughs> Tough to keep adding water and adding water while I'm working on putting these handles on. Because it just gets super dry otherwise. On the plus side, you can put quite a bit of water on it and smooth stuff out and st when you're attaching your handle without <clears throat> having to worry about the walls collapsing and stuff as much. And it's very different for me to work with because the B-Mix that I usually use, the white clay, uh, it doesn't like water much and um, is very, I guess you could say persnickety or, I don't know, there's probably a better word for it, but it does not like a lot of water and will cause you a lot of problems if you use a lot of it. But this clay, it's like you have to use a lot of water. <laughs> so it's a... Uh, Definitely a fun process going between the two. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to attach these handles. And then these are going to set up for a bit before I do the next part to the handles. Um, although Judging by how much it likes to absorb water, it probably won't be too long before they're ready to do the second stage of the handles. to itself pretty easy though without too much difficulty we'll see if it's 
Jeez, that way. Let's handle. I want to make sure we get it on there as straight as we can. Um, like I said, I just threw these like not even a week ago and they're already at this stage. I was not expecting to have to do this so soon. <laughs> Because the bee mix I threw about a week earlier just got dry enough to work on. So, <laughs> uh, kind of shows you how fast this stuff dries and how much it likes to absorb water. pretty malleable. There we go. I want the handles to be pretty flat at the top for the next stage. So, let me make sure we're doing that. Here we go. Got a handle. Hi everybody. So, I wanted to thank you for watching another one of my videos. I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos on the other clays I use. I tend to use about three or four different kinds of clay and have specific reasons for each of them. So if you would like to see more clay videos and why I use what I use, um, feel free to drop a comment below and let me know. Um, or if you want to tell me what kind of clay you use and why you like it, um, feel free to let me know too. I'm always looking for new clays and new experiments. So. Yeah, do that if you're interested. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I want to remind you guys to make messes, make mistakes, and enjoy that process. Especially with this clay. I'll be making a lot of, a lot of mistakes and a lot of messes. So. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.